Hello and welcome to Newton 2. I think we're going to start by learning how to start a coaster. And we'll look at how to create the station and the lift hill. And we'll also take a look at how to end the coaster, uh, spe specifically how to create the brake run at the end and also to bring the track back into the station so that it's uh, in alignment with the first section. So we start off by, uh, well the first thing I'm going to do is lower the track to 5 meters. That's a more typical uh, value you'll have in a real coaster. And then we, we need to decide how many cars are in the coaster. Uh, so I'm going to make a, a coaster with five cars and uh, two rows per car. So that tells me I need to create the station uh, at, le at a length of 17 meters. So all right. Let's go back to, I'm going to change um, sections to a straight section. And then we define how long that section is, 17 meters. So that's the station, that's the first section. Now we need to create the lift. So we'll add a section. And this will be the pull up for the lift, and so it will be curved. And we can change the direction of the curve with this slider here, and of course we want it to point up at uh, 90 degrees. We can adjust um, the transition into the, the curve uh, with this slider, or, or out, one or the other. Um, but for lifts, I usually put the lead in angle at 5 degrees, and same with the lead out angle. And uh, there, this is a bit too large of a radius, so I usually set it to about 12, and then set the total angle to about 30 degrees. And so now the pitch of the track is 30 degrees because that's uh, um, the angle of this of this turn. So that's the first section of the lift. So we'll add the next section, which, which will be the straight part. So we switch back to straight, and then we can adjust the height of the lift to whatever we, uh, we want. <clears throat> And then we need to create the top. So the top is created with another curved section. So we add a new section, change it to curved. This time we want the section to point down, so make the direction minus 90 degrees, like so. Adjust the radius to maybe, I don't know, 14 meters. Again, the lead in. Uh, is five degrees lead out? I'm going to make zero. Let me. I'll explain why in just a second. I'm going to set the angle to 45 degrees, and the reason is that it's important uh, for Newton to know when the car uh, detaches from the lift hill. And the reason it needs to get that right is because if it's a little bit too soon or a little bit too late, then the train is going to be going faster or slower than what Newton thinks it is. And just by experience, I've learned that uh, in no limits, the car tends to detach at an angle of about uh, 14 degrees or minus 14, 15 degrees um, pitch, pitch angle. So I'm going to end this section right here. And now what we need to do is, since this will be the transition from the lift hill to the physics section, we need to tell, it, tell Newton how fast the train is going at this point. And if you look back at the previous sections, uh, we could also specify that, but it's really not important. But this, uh, it's important to specify that now because the physics engine is about to take over. So we'll, we'll set the lift uh, speed to about 3 meters per second, which is about 10.8 uh, kilometers per hour. Like that. And again, I've set the lead-out angle to 0 degrees, and the reason I've done that is because the next section will also be curved. And again, have the direction of minus 90 degrees. Um, then I'm going to set the radius to 14 meters, like it was in the previous section. Now I'm going to set the lead-in angle to, to zero. And the reason I did that is because now this is a continuous. Uh, I mean, there, there's no seam at this uh, in, intersection between these two uh, sections. 
All right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the exit speed. So now it's set for manual. It's set to manual by default. Now I'm going to change it to auto. And now Newton is calculating what the speed is at the end of the section uh, based upon the physics. And you can see it's it starts at 3 meters per second, which is what we specified as the end speed for the previous section. Uh, and at the end of this section, uh, it's now the train will now be going a little bit over 15 meters per second. All right. And now what I want to do is I want to make this uh, transition a little bit more gradual. So now I'm going to have the uh, lead out angle to be a full 60 degrees like, like this. Or you can adjust it to your liking. But now that this sort of transitions between a, a sharp radius uh, to a, a nearly a straight line. All right, so now you can add a new section. And now we're going to switch back to forced base sections. And now you can proceed by adjusting the forces uh, as you would in the previous version or, or whatever. All right, now let's look at how to end the coaster. So this is one of the coasters that I posted on YouTube. This is the actual file that I used to generate uh, the coaster called Jaguar. And this is the end of the coaster. So this uh, here is the, is the brake run. It's obviously a straight section. So that part's pretty easy. But one thing you need to keep in mind is that if you go back to the previous section, which is a forced base section, in order to, to make a nice smooth transition into the straight brake run, we need to make sure that the normal force at the end of this section is equal to the cosine of the pitch angle. So the pitch angle is minus 12 degrees in this case. The cosine of that is 0.98. So we need, we need to make sure that the g-force, the, the normal force at the end of this uh, section that connects to the brake run is, again, equal to the cosine of the pitch angle. So it is in this case. So this, uh, this the brake run, brake run is just a straight geometry. After that is so this is a sloped brake run. I have a curved geometry with uh, again direction of 90 degrees to bring the pitch angle to zero uh, because that's what it will need to be to go back into the station. And then I adjusted the height. Excuse me. I adjusted the, the length of this brake run so that the the height at the end of this uh, curved section is equal to the height of the very first section, which is the station. So we started off with a Y uh, of 5 meters. It's 5 meters above the ground. We need to make sure that now we end at 5 meters above the ground. Uh, so the next section is just another straight section for uh, a block element, a block break uh, element. And the final section is a curved section. And I adjusted the yaw of the curved section so that, again, the yaw is 0 degrees at the end of the section, which corresponds to the 0 yaw of the very first section. And then I adjusted the radius of this section so that uh, the z value at the end of this section is equal to the beginning z value of, of the station. So let me go back to the very beginning. You'll see that. Here, this section ends at a uh, 100 meters e value. Uh, the station ends or begins at uh, 100 meter uh, z value. So now it's perfectly lined up. So then you can just import this, uh, export this as an element, import it into the uh, No Limits editor, and then uh, hit the C button to connect these two pieces up, and then the track is essentially complete.